two words, Pobody's Nerfect. Everybody's definition of well is different. So stop trying to tell me that because I'm not living a certain way or because I'm not doing something a certain way that I'm not good enough. Tracy, why do they react to vitamin D? Yeah. Sorry, I didn't realise I actually felt so passionate. <laughs> I'm going to take a deep breath this one. Probably the best way to start this video is like, if you are here, you are going to become a histamine expert. Well, do you know what? Not even a histamine expert. Like all of our videos, not just about histamine, but just health in general. Mm. And forget just health, lifestyle, like yeah. living life. I think so many of like these like channels will predominantly focus on like the supplements and the vitamins and the minerals but there's so much more in that like health lifestyle like living it like the people of like looking at the stress and you know how we kind of live our lives like society now has become to this point where we've become so self-absorbed in trying to live that we don't have a life 1000%. And I think that's the big problem with it. So just to start this video, this is a bit of a crazy one to wait to start the video, but I think it's a really good topic to start on. I feel like I just want to feel well again. You know, I just want like to help people and ourselves, honestly, just feel well again. Because not be perfect, not get absolutely every, you know, not have every single part of that like mega 20 step morning, afternoon and evening routine to be this like health robot, but just to be able to feel well and not exhausted and not feel the need to dig into all of these vices or you know distract myself by scrolling on social media for 37 hours a day and you know eat loads of sugar and drink loads of alcohol because I feel so not okay mm. and I don't know where to go that the only way to feel okay is to distract myself from myself do you know mm. what I mean like I just want to feel well but, you know, you have to define what well is for you because everyone's terminology of well is different. My famous, my, my favourite comment is this. Two words. Po body's nerfect. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, but like, but that's so true. Everybody's definition of well is different. So stop trying to tell me that because I'm not living a certain way or because I'm not doing something a certain way that I'm not good enough or mm. I shouldn't feel good or I need to do this to be like that or, you know, that this is what I need to do to be the perfect mom or the perfect uh, partner or this is what I need to have to feel sexy. Like, stop telling me that shit because mm. just help me get to the place that I feel well, like, Tell me how to get to that place. Tell me what to do to make myself feel better on a daily basis so I can enjoy my life. 100%. Um, remember, poor body's in effect. <laughs> you and your pronunciation of things. I think I'm just used to it now, but when we first started dating, it used to drive me nuts. Tracy, poor body's in effect. Anyway. We're talking about... Just watching your face going like, so <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, I'm not going down this we, So this video today is about supplements for histamine. I freaking hate this word. Say intolerance, it. Intolerance, which is not an intolerance. It's an immune dysregulation. It's an overload of histamine. Why do you keep saying histamine intolerance, Dilly? It's a histamine overload. Do you not realise? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, Misinformation. <laughs> so... We want to talk about supplements for histamine intolerance or histamine overload because it's a topic that comes up so much. And if you're on the forums, whether it's on Reddit or whether it's on Facebook, even on Instagram, people are talking about like, oh, this is the supplement that I take and this is what's worked for me. Now, to start this conversation off, the first thing I want to say to every single person, what works for one person may not work for another, right? That's the, that's the, 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 the generation thing, right? However... Binders will work for everybody, but we'll get into that a bit later, and I'll and I'll, I'll explain it why. I'll give you the reason and give you my my personal opinion on it. But let's start with the basics. The foundational. The foundation. Love a foundation. Well, one of the main things is vitamin C. 
Now, vitamin C has been one of the main supplements that have been recommended for people with histamine issues. Actually, before we go into supplements, it's worth mentioning that we just did a video on why you have histamine intolerance. So we're going to link that down below um, because I think that's a good thing to watch first. Yeah. Um, Because we explain a little bit about like why you might be experiencing histamine overload. We talk a lot about the immune dysregulation um, that's associated with that. So we're going to just go straight into the supplements here. Um, and But if you want a little bit of context for why we're talking about certain things that's definitely one to watch first sorry thank you t <laughs> just just a just a, a casual little plug of the other video all about context <laughs> well is it, i think if you're following us now and subscribing to our channel you'll know that we have all these everything's just it's all interlinked and like mm. i always say to people health is a journey it's not just one thing that you do and it fixes itself so to start vitamin c mm. now vitamin c for me is incredible because it's the foundation of health. It is one of the most, it's one of the most, what I would say researched nutrients, but not so researched nutrients. It's a controversial one because you have people like Linus Pauling, for example, who was, you know, had a, his trial and research. He's a Nobel Prize winning uh, scientist. And he said that vitamin C was like one of the root solutions for every single person. And there's a lot of good, like, older research on vitamin c but i feel like nowadays there's it's much harder to find research on kind of individual nutrients and vitamins it just doesn't seem to be done as much um but yeah if you go like back 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 there's some good studies out there oh but tracy you can't do any research (laughs) that's over five years old yeah go beyond the uh, 10 years okay didn't hear it from me yeah so if you look at that research so vitamin c the reason why it's recommended is because of the immune the fact that it balances the immune system so vitamin c has been touted by the jackasses in marketing and they're not jackasses they're actually geniuses in actually but i'm just going to be yeah. kicking we're just jealous i'm just jealous <laughs> they did this but basically what they talk about is boosting the immune system vitamin c does not boost your immune system it only boosts if your immune system is underreactive but what vitamin c does is if your immune system is underreactive it brings it to balance if it's overreactive it brings it to balance but the problem is so many people talk about reacting to vitamin c and it's not because like it's probably more so to do with what's been put into the vitamin C rather than the actual vitamin C. Because if you reacted to the vitamin C, you would be reacting to the foods that contain vitamin C. And that's like a whole different topic of conversation. Reacting to vitamin C in what way? They like um, they say like when they take vitamin C... Stomach they, acid? Yeah, no, they, I think it's like more to do with the... Um, I was going to say sulfates, not sulfates. The vitamin C contains... Sacrilates? Salicylates. Salicylates? Yeah, salicylates. Look at me mispronouncing. Yeah, I know. (laughs) Tracy, how dare you? That's normally your thing. Yeah. If they react to salicylates, that's the major, major problem with Uh, vitamin C. I see, I see, I see. But... Which is an overreaction in of itself. <laughs> yeah, because of your immune system being yeah, dysregulated. Yeah, 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 because yeah. salicylates are part of foods. They're in so many different foods. But the problem is because your immune system's overreactive, you're going to react to the salicylates because your immune system thinks it's bad. Yeah. But yeah, vitamin C. That's a, a cornerstone, a foundation. foundation. Yeah. I think, obviously, we have to mention vitamin D as well. Like, if we're talking about immune modulation cornerstones. It's the, like, it's the golden hormone. Is there anything hormone. to say there? It's like, if you don't have adequate vitamin D, then your immune system is not going to function how it needs to. And like, that's just it. If you are not taking vitamin D every single day, I mean daily, you are going to get sick. And you're the, what the, you're the biggest, biggest trick of vitamin D is, is the fact that what they've hidden from you, and like I'm going to say what people have hidden from you, is the fact that it's got a half-life. It's used mm-hmm. every single daily. And if you don't, I've got, we've done a separate video on vitamin D. I'll link it in the description. Talk all about how vitamin D is in the system. Vitamin D is something our body naturally produces. We're one of very few mammals that actually produce our own vitamin D from the sunshine. That's how important it is. It It's involved in so many um, reactions in the body and the way that the body functions, you wouldn't believe it. And the thing with vitamin D is, 
if you have low vitamin D, you don't just have the symptoms automatically. Those symptoms build up over time. And like if you take vitamin D, like let's say, for example, calcifediol, and you take that, you feel such a quick rush of vitamin D that you just have this like you feel like a superhero. You actually feel like a superhero. But the reason why vitamin D has been mentioned for histamine is because it's a long-term immune regulator. It's an immune balancer. So what vitamin D does is it links what we call like your innate immune system. That's the immune system you, you've been born with, right? That's the immune system we get from our, our mums. And then it links that with our adaptive immune system. So our adaptive immune system is what our body reacts and responds to. So whether it's viruses, bacteria, infections, foods, molds, mycotoxins, supplements, whatever it is, what vitamin D does is it makes sure that your immune system doesn't overreact to them and brings it back into balance. That is literally what causes the, the imbalance. And one of the biggest questions was that people ask, and this is a question for T, I'm going to hit back at you actually, was when people say, well, I take vitamin D, but I react to it. Tracy, why do they react to vitamin D? Cofactors. So sometimes we have to remember that the body works as a system. So, you know, it's not just you know, you need vitamin D or you need iron or you need magnesium f to fit into this little, you know, bucket in your body. They, they're they all interconnected. So if I take loads and loads of zinc, that can support my immune system, but actually that can also reduce my copper levels because zinc and copper work in a balance. Same with vitamin D. So in order for your body to utilize vitamin D, there's certain cofactors that you require as well, like magnesium and, you know, vitamin K is involved and things like that. So I think if you, I won't go into it in massive detail, but if you are taking vitamin D and you're finding you're reacting to it, or honestly, if you're taking any nutrient that you know you require, say you've tested and you can see that you're low in it, but you're reacting to it, Often, so, so often, the reason is a lack of cofactors, which are preventing your body from processing it. And this is a fact. People are looking at like, these supplements in their in individual basis, but it's, a lot of it's just sales. There's mm -hmm. just sales marketing. Everything works in connection and synergy with one another. And if you raise one up, you can f affect the other one and put it out of, ba out of balance, basically. Yeah, nutrients do not work like drugs. They're not created or designed to work on their own. They're created to work in synergy with the rest of the body. So I think we really need to keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. um, before we move on, just another thing I wanted to mention about vitamin D, because you said there, you know, vitamin D, another foundational nutrient to consider in relation to histamine and immunity. But I don't know if this is just me, but... I've noticed that when you look up, you know, oh, top supplements to support histamine intolerance or, you know, what nutrients do you need for histamine? Vitamin D doesn't actually come up that frequently. I feel like a lot of the like fancy kind of... I know why, by the way. Eh, yeah, no, no, I know. But a lot of the like fancy supplements come up and the ones that you can really pinpoint to support histamine come up. But actually... Because vitamin D is foundational in that it lifts and supports your immune system, which then has the knock on effect to histamine. Mm. That is way more important than any of the other supplements that we'll talk about in a minute, like quercetin, bromelain. Um, uh, you know, we're going to talk about some of those NAC, things like that, that often do come up in these histamine supplement lists. But you need to understand when we say foundational, like the foundational nutrients should be your first point of call. The other ones are just extra. Yeah. 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 So it's interesting to me that vitamin D just never comes up on these lists. I'm like, why? Because when people are seeking health, <laughs> you see what I did there? <laughs> they focus on the like the, the kind of like, oh, you need to get rid of histamine. Yeah. But they're not talking about the immune dysregulation. Yeah. Because... That would fix people. And if we fix people, then we won't make a business out of it. We won't sell all of these things. Oh, these things are proper yeah, yeah, yeah. that's so That's so true because it's like we're, when you look up these lists, whether it's for histamine or like IBS or like acne or any of this, we're, we're trying to push these 
solutions that treat the symptom, but we're not talking about the foundational piece that we need to help the system work better. So it's not going to be an issue. You eliminate the issue entirely. Oh yeah, so like, but let's let's go on to diamond oxidase then. Yeah, like, yeah. Let's, I literally this this this, <laughs> That's is, a good segue. this is a good this is a good segue to diamond oxidase. Now, DAO diamond oxidase has been like it's the golden child that everyone talks about for yeah. histamine. Well, as in like taking DAO enzyme as a supplement. As a supplement specifically comes because up the enzyme breaks down histamine and turns it from histamine back into histidine, and that our body can then process it, but. DAO does not fix anything. All it does is an ends it's that enzymatic approach, right? But it does more than histamine. You're not looking at the putrescine and cadaverine, the other enzymes that diamond oxidase is important too. So if your diamond oxidase is overtaxed and overworked and you're supplementing it, bro, or should I say girl, you are gonna spend so much money on diamine oxidase. You will be taking it every single day. But do you know what the worst part of it is? People have now followed these diamond oxidase companies as like the the like the, the these these are these are the people we need to go to. That's a pharmaceutical approach. That's a pharmaceutical approach to histamine because what you're doing is saying, well, take this for the rest of your life and you will fix it. That's not the solution to it. But also have like read the research around uh, taking the DAO enzyme. Like the way that we've gotten to the place from oh DAO is a factor in breaking down excess histamine in the gut to, oh, let's create a DAO enzyme and take that for histamine excess. Like the journey between those two points is actually like incoherent. Like if you really read how the mechanisms work, it's such a reductionist approach to think, oh, let me take more DAO and that'll just break down the excess. We don't actually know. I haven't, I mean, please tell me if I'm wrong, link down the research if I've missed it. But I haven't read any studies to show that taking more DAO enzyme actually works intrinsically with the body to flush even more uh, histamine out. Everything that I've read shows that there's like an upper limit for that DAO mechanism to work. Mm -hmm. So like as far as I can understand, in cases where there's extreme excess or overload of histamine, which is most of the cases that we're talking about, because let's be honest, we usually wait until an issue is really, really bad until we do something about it. So if you're at the place where histamine feels bad enough for you to go and get help, usually you're beyond the mild excess place. And from what I've seen clinically, case studies, in the research studies, I don't think that ingesting a DAO enzyme can do much more than support a very mild excess in histamine. Correct me if I'm wrong. You're the histamine expert. I mean, it, yes, it can. Like, so like, this isn't a bash against diamine oxidase because it, if like, no, it has a place. Yeah, it, it definitely has a place, and I think it does have a benefit to so many people. And it isn't it, for me personally. If I was um, thankfully I'm not a clinician but if I was a clinician it would be a point of call that I would look at because it would provide a good instant relief to reduce not just histamine but the putrescine and cadaverine and it would bring down all these amines which cause so much you know toxicity to the body like you've got things like tyramine dimethamine they're all things that are found in like you know processed and cooked meats that can cause a reaction in the system that can cause that histamine histamine response but diamine oxidase is that like plaster it kind of like you can support it, but the question you need to be asking yourself: What's causing that DAO deficiency? Is it genetics? Is it the fact that your body's overtaxed in diamond oxidase? Because if diamond oxidase is low, it's because it's being overused in the body. It's because it's trying to get rid of, of those what they those toxins quickly. But but this is exactly what I'm saying. Like this is my issue with DAO enzyme supplementation coming up as like the top result when you're looking at what supplements to take for histamine intolerance, histamine overload, histamine excess, is that like to me, taking a DAO enzyme throughout the day and increasing the dose because most likely you will have to continually increase the dose is not a solution because we're, if you're taking loads of excess DAO 
And your DO enzyme, maybe your natural ability is malfunctioning a little bit. What about like, when are we going to start looking at the all of the trace minerals or cofactors that we could be missing for that link? How many people are looking into their micronutrient status? Because if you look at the DAO pathway, so the body's pathway to produce DAO and break down histamine and putrescine and cadaverine and all of that, you need a lot of cofactors. You need iron, you need B6, you need B12, you need copper, um, you need CME, you need FAD, you need a lot of different things in order for this pathway to work. So I think the reason that I struggle with DAO supplementation is that I feel like it's distracting from looking at these foundational pieces. And again, it's only going to solve a a certain amount. It's not actually going to help your body overcome this issue. It's cool that it makes money though, doesn't it? Yeah, no, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, great, it's great if you're a supplier of these things because people hooked. get hooked on these yeah. and they need it forever. So it's, and possibly they need to increase their dose over time because their body, it most likely what's happening is you're taking all of these things, they're working, so you're forgetting about all of the other work. And because then your nutrient status is reducing, you're needing to increase your dose of this synthetic DAO enzyme and the cycle continues. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't realise I actually felt so passionate. <laughs> hey, I think, I think you know, the, you know, a candid conversation about this will bring a lot of passion out of it. And this is what this is what our channel is all about. It's about that candid conversation, which mm. no one's actually having. Just to remit to back to what your diamond oxide is, just to finish, like to tie this one up a bit. You know, the, the history that's in food, let's say, for example, bread, right? Yeah. You know why it's part of that process, right? Of giving the bread, the aroma, the taste and smell, right? But also histamine in food triggers the histamine 2 receptor in the stomach which increases the acid and so if our body needs that histamine to trigger that acid production to break it down if you're modulating it with diamine oxidase and you stop the hist you literally break the histamine down you're going to send your acid out of whack and we're not talking about this mm -hmm. the fact that those foods that contain those histamine it's likely that nature has put them in there, not just because it needs to, it, it needs to, sorry, because of that processing, but it needs to be in there because it allows the body to digest and break it down. It's so part like, of the system. It's part of the system. It's a, it's a process. So stop, stop sending it out of whack because you're essentially taking the pharmaceutical approach and you're taking the allopathic medicine approach, but calling it a supplement. And that's dangerous. And I think as well, this like circles back to why we need to stop making histamine the enemy stop calling histamine the villain stop making histamine the issue intolerant <laughs> no but no, i'm intolerant but, to you saying it calling it histamine intolerance yeah, but what even should be that, saying. that language histamine intolerance it makes it intrinsically something negative mm. but it's not because histamine is something that your body naturally produces you know you're always saying um that and it naturally produces it because it's required for several different functions. So if we make it the enemy and we're trying to eradicate the body of all histamine, then actually you can have another issue in that it's all of all of a sudden your digestive system isn't functioning properly, your immune system isn't functioning properly, and your system starts to break down for a whole host of other reasons that aren't histamine related. So we just... I just think the language and the context is so important if your goal is to truly, you know, move on from this. Because as you say, histamine is boring. Who wants to sit having histamine issues for the rest of their life? Mm. I want to resolve my histamine issues so I can go and live a fun life and not be thinking about, oh, can I eat this? Can I not eat this? Oh, is this triggering my pain? Is it not? Do I have to take this? Do I not have to take this? Like all of these things, it's too much. Yeah. And let's be honest, if we have a person who does that, what's the what's our, our response to them? We stay away from them. Yeah. And if people are staying away from you, you're that person. Yeah. So remember, you're that person because <laughs> people's like, I don't want to hang around this person because they're like their their negativity is way too high. Yeah. But it is a good it is a good point. So let's move on to quercetin. Yeah, I think quercetin, that's a good place. That's yeah. a big one that comes up a lot. Quercetin is like I really like quercetin. I'm Same. a big, big fan of it because 
what quercetin does, it's a mast cell stabilizer. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people who take quercetin, the reason why they feel the benefit so well is because it strengthens the mast cell lining. Mm -hmm. And if you if you look at the you know the reason why you have a tolerance video, I talk about how mast cell activation syndrome is two things. It can be either an overproduction of mast cells because of the immune system being over over producing and like you know out of whack. The reason why is mast cells are sensitive, and if mast cells are sensitive quercetin fixes that mm. quercetin strengthens the mast cells and it's what the pharmaceutical approach is with the sodium chromoglycate mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. mast cell stabilizers that they focus on but. yeah and i think another nice thing about histamine is that it also mediates the release of uh, certain inflammatory compounds like leukotrienes, prostaglandins, things like that, because we know from uh, speaking about histamine intolerance or histamine overload that there's a massive inflammatory aspect to this. So, and it's something I love about, you know, natural compounds and back to like how things work together, that it has many uh, functions. So, stabilizing mast cells and uh, supporting in the inflammatory process, like those are two big hitters in terms of your experience of uh, symptoms within histamine, um, histamine intolerance. I think another one that comes up is bromelain. Yeah. Do you hear that one much? I've heard that like, bromelain has come across, but I don't know much about bromelain, to be honest with you. I've talked more about quercetin than I have bromelain. Go yeah. On. So bromelain is an enzyme that occurs naturally in pineapple. Um, that's why you often, I don't know, did you ever hear this, but I know traditionally whenever you had digestive issues, um, you'd often be recommended like eat loads of pineapple because mm. it's really, really strong. It has a really strong kind of enzymatic activity and it helps to kind of like break down food and help it get ready for digestion. Um, so essentially bromelain is working in the same way. It's an enzyme, um, but it helps to reduce the circulating allergenic proteins in the system and oh. it helps to kind of break those down and though you know when there's that massive amount of histamine that's causing that hypersensitivity probably from instable mast cells mm. bromelain really helps to break those down and thus kind of reduce that hypersensitive reaction but something that's worth noting because i i do find that in a lot of these like lists around histamine supplements you often see quercetin and bromelain um listed separately but actually i if you are going to supplement with these things and i do really like them i i've used them for many years i don't really anymore because i don't need it as much but supplement with them together because bromelain actually really supports the action of quercetin as well as vitamin C. So if you can get a complex that combines quercetin, bromelain and vitamin C or you take them separately, whatever whatever needs be, the dosing for vitamin C, depending on where you're at, might be slightly different. So maybe a quercetin, bromelain complex plus vitamin C on the side. But those three compounds work together. So you're going particularly... The bromelain and the vitamin C, it helps the activity of the quercetin. So you're taking quercetin alone versus with those other two compounds is really going to maximize that effect. So I think if you're going to go down that route, do it all in. Thank you, Tracy. I just learned something brand new with histamine. Really? Is, I, that literally just, uh, I, I've actually got to blow my mind a little bit. That Thank makes you so me much. feel really happy because you know so much about histamine that you really stretch my... Uh, my my knowledge so that makes you really i'm happy. still learning i told i tell people this all the time like with with histamine it, it, anything that we do anything we do on this podcast and we talk about because we're going to talk about a lot more topics and if you go into the channel you'll see so many of the topics that we talk about but histamine i think is just another topic that you constantly need to learn about mm -hmm. it there is no one expert there's no one solution with it as well yeah and also i think it's really like one of the reasons i love having these conversations is that Having worked, you know, both clinically and also in the media, I think what I've realized is that we put so much information out there and there's so much good information out there, but we don't provide the context mm -hmm. or the experience side of things. We only kind of like throw out these studies or throw out these links. But actually to create 
true wellness or to kind of really get yourself over the line, mm. there's a lot of contextual aspects that I think we miss sometimes. Yeah. So that's why I really love having these conversations to kind of bring that to light. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a good way of like learning, isn't it? It's listening mm. to multiple people and understanding it from loads of different aspects. You learn you more every time yeah. you talk about it. Sometimes, you know, even when you're talking about something, you like you make another connection mm. because we're constantly learning and growing. hundred yeah. percent. Well, the next one, stinging nettle. Oh, Ooh. this is you love this. <laughs> I've, you know what? Right. I've really got into stinging nettle recently yeah. because like. I, when I started reading into a, little, a bit more about stinging, stinging out and how it, how it worked, I couldn't believe how it was basically a replacement for histamine one receptor mm. antihistamines, which is like your cetrazine hydrochloride, your lorotidine, um, your um, fexofenadine. Those three are like the medication versions that turn off the histamine one receptor. But stinging nettle does the exact same thing. It's a natural antihistamine mm. because what it does is it, it basically it attaches to that histamine one receptor and blocks the histamine from actually responding. But one of the fascinating things with um, stinging nettle is it's linked to tryptase. So mast cells release tryptase and tryptase is actually that one is linked with um, like asthma. It's linked with inflammation in the actual lungs. But in one of the most interesting things, it's also linked with an overactive immune system. So tryptase is one of the reasons why our immune system becomes out of dysregulated and becomes overreactive. And stinging nettle basically breaks down tryptase and stops it from actually causing that inflammation, which is so cool. I think that's awesome. Yeah. I love stinging nettle in and general so as cheap. a compound. Yeah, It's so cheap. Like yeah. a link... Um, I'll link a product, um, a herbal remedy in, in the description for a stinging nettle. And I do think it's something that we should all be trying. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a myriad of um, functions for stinging metal. Mm. And I think just that baseline, the anti-inflammatory aspect, which anti we, aspect. All, we all need. But I, I don't know about you, but I quite like nettle as a tea. Mm. So there's like, depending on what the issue is, depending on the like dose dependent, things like that. But on like a general level, there's certain compounds that I feel strongly need to be taken a certain way in order mm. to function the way that you want them. Um, but nettle is one that I quite like its utility as a tea. And I think one, if cost is a factor, but also particularly in the summer, something that I love to do is just make a massive vat of nettle tea and have it in the fridge or in a jug and actually have it chilled even throughout the day with ice. Like let it really, really um, like strengthen and, and over time. Or, you know what I was just thinking would be so cool. Stinging nettle you soup? Could, well, stinging nettle soup, but I'm just thinking of the summer in particular when, you know, there's hay fever and stuff that can exacerbate uh, histamine issues even more. Have you ever heard of sun tea? No. So this is something, when I was doing some research into structured water, which I'm not going to go on the like, whole thing, I feel like I'm going off point already, but um, I came across this thing where uh, some kind of traditional methods of structuring water, and one of them was to make this thing called sun tea, where basically you get a big vat of water, you put tea bags in it, and you leave it in the sun to brew. And the sunshine helps to structure the water, making it more bioavailable to the body. I I don't know for sure, because I'm literally just guessing here. But I wonder if you're making your nettle tea to support the um, histamine modulation and immune system in the summer, could you actually also get like structured nettle tea by having a big vat of water, adding your nettle tea bags and putting that in the sun. I might need to research that and that's, get back to that's you. That's a research I think. I need yeah. to research that. But that could be interesting. Be interesting Add a too. sprinkle of salt, get your trace minerals. Yeah, okay. Hmm, that could be interesting. Let's have a look into that one. Yeah. That one? <laughs> All right, tea, NAC. This is another one that's messaged, like it's talked about a lot in the different groups and stuff. Yeah. So tea, tell me a bit more about NAC. So we've all heard about glutathione, probably. So NAC is essentially just the amino acid that's the precursor to the creation of glutathione, which you hear a lot about glutathione in relation to anti-inflammatory 
detoxification detox soothing it's a very very powerful kind of antioxidant healing compound in that sense um but interestingly both glutathione and NAC have been found to reduce the viscosity um, of the mucus, allowing for the clearing of the airways um, and supporting your respiratory health. So in particular, I think NAC can be a really good thing to consider for people that get a lot of that kind of those airway related symptoms. So if they get that kind of like stuffy, runny nose or watery eyes or itchy throat or, you know, they're prone to asthma or any of those kind of things, I think NAC or glutathione can be an interesting compound to think of. Glutathione, ten, in terms of like cost, glutathione can be quite expensive. So as long as you have all of your cofactors, NAC can be a good thing to consider because your body will naturally convert some of that into glutathione again within a nourished environment. Can we just link what you just said there? Have, have you, have you yeah. seen the, the, the most, what's screaming at me right now? The word detoxing? Yeah. The fact that the body's not breaking things down. Mm -hmm. NAC is literally triggering glutathione, which is like, is it your phase three and phase four detoxification? I think yeah, it opens yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. So if you're if you're using glutathione to detox to clear the system, I remember a, um, a chap had a uh, glutathione drip and he was like, I feel cleaner. Yeah. He's like, I feel like I've been cleaned internally. But that's a good analogy. Like that's essentially what it is. But again you have to have a nourished environment. You have to have the right cofactors in order for your body to create glutathione. You have to have enough protein in order to have the amino acids, you know, in order to have NAC. So I think that's a really important consideration as well in that, like, it, like it's this whole idea of, you know, when people say, oh, you don't need any detox support. Your body naturally <laughs> detoxes itself. I'm like, yeah, in theory. But have you actually seen how most people's bodies are functioning or rather malfunctioning at the moment? Even the healthiest people, even people that are really on it and really informed. It's really hard to maintain that clear detox pathway because of all of the daily things that are coming up against us. Most of us have some some sort of weakness along the chain. Everyone has detoxing problems, right? In order to prove this point, if detoxing wasn't it wasn't an issue, why the hell are we filtering everything? Yeah. Diesel cars need to be filtered because the pollution is toxic. Mm. Water, tap water, Brita is one of the largest companies for filtration. Why? Because water needs filtering because yeah. it's not being filtered enough. I mean, we th yeah. I think we need to be filtering um, probably even more. Yeah, and like why air do filters? Air conditioning. Mm -hmm. Everything has a filter. You you watch some of our earlier videos. We talk about using um, air filters to reduce the pollen in the air. We have one in the office because of the amount of toxin that we're exposed to. Listen, you can detox what's coming into your system. Like you took, look, listen to Gary Brecker. He does such a conversation Love about, Gary yeah, Gary Brecker's incredible. Yeah, he talks a lot so about it, but he talks about like, you can either, you know, filter what's going in, in into the body beforehand, looking at structured water, adding hydrogen to the system. But listen, if you're not detoxing yourself internally, so let's get onto binders. Now, you know that we are the home of binders. We talk about binders in such a, in such a unique way. Mm -hmm. You need to be taking a binder. Every single person needs to be taking a binder. Why? Because your body only has a certain amount of capacity where it can detox. We've got toxins from food, from water, from air, from medication, from, from supplements, makeup, from, from drugs. From household cleaners, so, from clothes. Oh, tea. And like... This from gets exhaust me, pipes. Yeah. Th this gets me excited, right? Because I want to like just digress this one topic it came up in the news recently and a lot of people are talking about is it red red rock salt the oh, famous yeah, salt in yeah, america yeah. and so basically like someone put up a post going look at red rock salt it's got all this aluminium and lead in it it's like 70 times more powerful than the system right that's great that mm -hmm. controversial statement is going to do great because it's going to souse it's going to it's going to push your media as a truth giver but do you know what the term FU comes to mind because what you're not talking about is the fact of why is that salt got those toxins in there? Because of over manufacturing, mm -hmm. the fact that pollution is in the air and it's going into and it's leaching into the ground. So, of course, those food sources are going to have toxins in there. Of course, they are. Like, 
shut up, you idiot. Like, of course it's going to have it in there, but, but he, you're using it to sell more of that, that, that problem. But the problem is, like, someone commented on a on a group group that I'm part of on, on Facebook, and they were like, oh, it's got all these different toxins in there. And I, and I literally commented, and by the way, I was the only comment on this because everyone else was too busy, like, shocked by the controversy. Mm-hmm. And I was like, so you've got toxins in food, You've got toxins in furniture. You've got toxins in the air that you breathe. Where does it stop? Tampons. Tampons? Well, it doesn't stop with tampons. But remember that piece of research I sent to you recently that found, I think they tested like 30 of the most popular tampon brands and they found like high levels of arsenic and lead. In fact, I'm going to misquote this maybe, but I think there was like higher arsenic in the or- some of the organic brands even. But then high like lead and maybe mercury in um some of the other top brands and like you're literally like putting that into your body and letting it stay there for several hours in the day so like really we need to be talking about what do we need to be doing every day to help detox our system because we live in an environment where no matter how hard you try and you know that we try pretty hard I try really hard (laughs) in terms of like choosing clean things and minimizing our exposure and still you're going to be exposed so instead of like freaking out about that we need to change the conversation into what do we need to do to stay healthy in today's environment and that includes modulating our immune system and minimizing histamine excess so mm. back to <laughs> yeah but you, you're right to back you. to binders yeah binders are like the core that's to our, it that's our go-to yeah like we li- we take we mm. always have zeolite in our cupboard yeah and the right zeolite in our cupboard the right yeah because yeah it should be the zeolite that's the registered right as a side. medical device mm. because it's a device it's not a food supplement what zeolite does it's not just about the histamine but zeolite comes to low light or binders only and by the way it's not just all binders only specific binders that do this what they do is they take they literally absorb histamine they absorb ammonium heavy metals aluminium aluminium is controversial by the way because just so you know those coffee pods that you're drinking from that famous coffee brand with that famous guy who does all the adverts for it it takes in when an aluminium pod goes into the ground it takes 500 years for the the body to actually sorry the ground to decompose aluminium so imagine what it's doing to your body it takes away things like lead cadmium arsenic molds mycotoxins aflatoxins ochratoxins so basically all those things that we're exposed to on a daily basis which trigger the immune system to be overreactive that's what a binder does it the zeolite cup to low light or the binder i'll link in the description it absorbs those toxins and it removes them now to say that you will be toxin free is impossible Mm. but don't get me wrong i've seen the report where people have been using binders for like six months and this specific binder that we talk about a lot it literally mops it up brings it down and we've seen people's toxin levels on their charts Mm. tested where they've gone really low so it does work and by the way it's not the be all and end all but it's the foundation one thousand it's not going to it's again i like it's not going to actually fix a broken system, but it's going to remove something that's causing the breakdown. The and so yeah, so it's going to allow your system to kick back into gear. And also I think it's a good method of kind of clearing out a very clogged system in order to get a better picture as to what actually is going wrong. Because mm. I think sometimes your system is so muddied and you have so many symptoms that it can actually be really difficult, even for a clinician, mm. to really pinpoint what exactly the issue is. And the problem is that the best way to pinpoint what the issue is is to run a ton of tests. But because a lot of the tests that are required for these chronic chronic conditions aren't available, you know, on the NHS or, you know, through support um, insurance supported healthcare, it's out of pocket. And so we don't have the money to support that testing. So I think I think using a binder or using some of these foundational nutrients or considerations is a really good way of clearing the system so that you can kind of observe and figure out what exactly your trigger is or your main trigger is. Mm, 100%.
I, I couldn't, literally mm-hmm. couldn't agree more. What else do we have? Colostrum. Oh, yeah. I, I honestly, I love colostrum. <laughs> you love I a bit of colostrum. I cannot recommend it enough to anybody. It is, I don't, forget, I don't care if it's organic or non-organic. Like, that's one, what, it's a conversation for another time. But colostrum is so, so powerful mm-hmm. because it's first milk. It's what we get from when we're breastfeeding from our mums, when our mums give us that breast milk, that's colostrum going into the system. And colostrum is the basic building blocks of your immune system. That IgG that's being released, the immune, immune, immune growth factors that are being released into the systems. And those growth factors, they literally bring the immune system back into balance. So histamine intolerance, and I friggin' hate that word, or histamine overload is an, an overactive immune system. So that's why colostrum is a baseline because it's so powerful in how it works. And it's why colostrum is being talked about so, so much. But the issue with colostrum is a lot of people don't find it beneficial, not because of the, the, the colostrum not working, it's because they're not getting enough. Thousand percent. Read the research. Mm-hmm. It's not it's not eight hundred milligrams. It's when you're taking fifteen, twenty, twenty-five grams where the research shows that people had a benefit from colostrum. So uh, honestly, if you're having a protein shake of some sorts or you're having like a smoothie every day, mm-hmm. literally awesome. scoop some colostrum in. Yeah. Honestly, girl, you will feel so much more benefit from it. And yes, there are you can react to colostrum, especially if you've got an overactive immune system. So you can look at casein-free mm-hmm. colostrum because casein is actually the protein a lot of people react to. It's why whey protein is so, like, so often given out to people. It's not actually the way you're reacting to it. It's the casein protein. So you can take decaseinated protein. Well, it's, you know, it's one of the, one of the factors yeah, of it. it depends on the person, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think the thing with colostrum, though, as well, is definitely taking enough is a big factor. But out of a lot of the supplements and nutrients that we've mentioned today I do people aren't going to want to hear this I do think that making sure you have a high quality source for the colostrum Mm. I mean I think you should be getting a high quality source for everything but sometimes because of you know budgets or 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 that kind of thing um sometimes we need to pick and choose a little bit if you are going to supplement with colostrum I really think that it's important to invest in a good quality one because that's the supplement that's going to be very highly affected by the diet and um, the environment of the um, usually it's cows um, or maybe goats or sheep or whatever that um, donkey that, that donkey but the animals that that colostrum has mm. been harvested from their diet is going to impact the quality um, of the immune factors that you're getting so yeah that's a place that I mm. don't skimp apparently donkey colostrum is one of the closest colostrums to human breast mm-hmm. milk mm-hmm. so don't be an ass take colostrum <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> i had to go with a joke um i'm I've, trying to think i've got one last supplement okay this is gonna be the best supplement you'll ever take in your life a glass of water <sighs> <laughs> right the, I know this is ideally filtered structured water filtered water with electrolytes in it mm. you cannot you cannot underestimate how powerful water is if you are dehydrated you will have a histamine response because your your body needs water in order to function because remember we're 80% water and we sweat even when you're sleeping, your body sweats. It's why in the morning, one of the first things that me and T do is we drink a big pint of water. We don't drink anything else. With salt. With salt added into it. But that's such an important factor. That is one of the cheapest supplements you can produce. And I'm not talking about buying it from a plastic bottle because mm. plastic bottles have their plasticizers in there. Filtering your water and drinking it and keeping hydrated. And do you know how you, and, and you taught me this, so I'm sorry, I'm going to take over from this point of that, but you taught me this, because I used to say to you, T, when I drink lots of water, I pee loads. And what was the reason? Because your body isn't able to absorb the water because you don't have enough salts, enough electrolytes to pull it go. into your cells. So if you're drinking tons of water, but you're not feeling hydrated or you're urinating a lot, try adding salts. Yeah. It's it's honestly it's such a a massive factor. That is like one of the ports of calls that I 
always say yeah. to people. Game changing. It's game changing. Yeah, yeah, Drinking yeah. water is such a powerful yeah, so tool. Simple. Why do you think Gary Brecker's done so well with the hydro, hyd- hydrogen and water? Because you're oh, literally, yeah, yeah. People, you know, a hydrogen is part of our system. And people, like, I remember one of the videos we did, um, one of the chats we did with um, Caroline Willie. The first thing she said to said to us on the chat was, when I have hydrogen in my water, I feel like I can drink it more easily. And by the way, we've got our own structured water in our in our home. Mm. And honestly, it, it's like, it's just so, it goes down so smoothly. And so, yes, water. I cannot stress this enough. Water. So another supplement that I think is really important to mention because it comes up all the time in these histamine supplement lists are histamine probiotics. <laughs> and I want to hear your Jesus. thoughts on these because you know how I feel about these. Oh but um, my God. I'm going to let you speak on it. <sighs> I'm going to take a deep breath this one. <laughs> so the probiotics for histamine and when people are trying to seek health, wink, wink, when they're trying to get that probiotic, probiotic for it, what they talk about is the bacteria that don't produce histamine if you take a probiotic it's like an adaptogen which is what you taught me to Mm. was that if you increase a certain bacteria you actually can send the gut out of disbalance because it's all about balancing these probiotics they technically they, they what they say is i think it's rhamnosis and bifidobacterium i think if i remember correctly and lactobacillus are the ones that people recommend for histamine right they don't do sweet fa for histamine what they do is they support with the immune system but the issue is if you if you have a leaky gut if you have an overactive immune system which most people do and if you're on a low histamine diet because that impacts your gut bacteria because you're not producing enough of the right fibers to basically produce the good gut bacteria you can actually send them out of balance. There is no probiotic for histamine. There's enzymes that are being produced to help the degradation of histamine, like diamine oxidase, but they don't, they're not, they're not the, the point of call. But for some reason, people are like, oh yeah, I take this histamine, this probiotic for histamine. No. It, it, no, it doesn't. There's, there's no correlation there. And it definitely, definitely should not be a first step. I think there's. I mean, you know how I feel about probiotics in general and this like obsession we have with probiotics. But I think there is some utility for some probiotic supplementation in some cases. But the idea of it being a first response and particularly in relation to histamine, I just don't think it makes sense for most cases. Yes, your gut health and your gut microbiome is really important for supporting your immune system but in the case in that case I really do think that actually the foods you consume are a much better avenue to entry because we don't have good evidence to show that just flooding the system with tons of these probiotics particularly over a long term we do have some evidence around kind of like the short medicinal use is actually effective because, again, as we said, the body works differently. You can't just bulldoze it. It works intrinsically with across a whole host of different nutrients and compounds and systems. So I really think that, yes, you should be supporting your gut health. But in the case of histamine, start with foods. And sometimes that actually just means removing certain foods that are causing issue. And by certain foods, I mean processed crap you know I don't mean move removing food groups necessarily um but actually just getting some of the the foods in your diet that support good um bacteria pre-probiotics that kind of thing I don't know I'm I'm not I've read the research and I'm just not convinced on this whole idea of histamine probiotics there isn't research on it tea that's the problem it's just people like it's just good marketeers putting a like probiotic yeah. to c- complex together it, and saying it works it's too reductionist once it's again like, reductionist. Yeah, it's the same with the dao enzyme like if you look at the research it's too reductionist we don't know before we go i wanted to ask you so we just went through 
a massive list of different supplements that can support in the case of histamine intolerance, histamine overload, histamine excess. But before we go, I want to get your two cents on, you know, most people can't start taking all of these things. And actually, in a lot of cases, I don't recommend taking a whole host of things immediately. If you had histamine overload, where would you start? I want to get your thoughts. Out of all of those things, where would you where would you start first? It's so difficult to like. I know it's personal, but just yeah, generally. yeah, it's with with histamine histamine overload. What works for one person won't work for the other person. But I always say start with the basics. Drink water, get hydrated, look at your vitamin vitamin D, look at your colostrum, look at your immune dysregulation. What's going to help your immune system? Look at your basic minerals. Like, are you getting enough sodium in your diet? Like, are you getting enough salt in your diet, as we'd, we'd say? Are you getting enough electrolytes in your in your body? Mm-hmm. Those basic things are a really good starting point because it's all about regulating and balancing, not boosting. Piss off with your boosting. Like, that. <laughs> just get out of my face with your boosting bullshit. Like, you can do one of your marketeers. Talk about balancing the immune system. If we can get to balancing the immune system, we can start working on like the triggers. Yeah. That for me is like the point of call is looking at your basic minerals. Bring your body back to a baseline and then look at the look at the supplements and things on top. Yeah. Stop telling me about a low histamine diet. Yeah. Like get lost with your low histamine diet. Like, okay, yeah, it fixes the symptomology. But if you're if the person's coming in and the first thing they're recommending is a low histamine limiting li- diet, and then they're talking about adding the foods back in twelve weeks, tell me that for that person who it works. Yeah. Also, what are you doing to like regulate the body within that twelve weeks yeah. in order to help it cope with bringing back in those foods? Because very likely, and as we've seen, nothing. Yeah. I'm just going to throw this out there because. Um, I totally agree with everything you said in terms of bringing it back to a good yeah, foundation. Yeah, what's, what's your opinion on it? But if we're really just talking about supplements, mm. um, I would go in with the binder. So because I really, really think, and it's something that I see so much, is that when the body is overcrowded and when it's in that real, um, what's the word? Um when it's in that crisis state, yeah. so you have so much excess histamine, you're feeling absolutely shit. Um, I think you need something, you need as close to a bulldozer. I said, I know I said like, you know, no bulldozers, but you need as close to a bulldozer as possible, like the uh, Tox Prevent Zeolite, to go in, clean up all of that excess histamine clean up any of the excess toxins and things like that that are loading your body down, get rid of that, and then at least you're at a place where you can be like, okay, now what? So I've cleared out all of that excess and my body isn't being just, my body is out of crisis mode. And then I need to look at, okay, what is my nutrient status? Um, how do I support my immune system? You know, how do I manage my stress? How do I look at my lifestyle? All of those other things that are going to support you long term. Um, and then I think that there's certain things. So like we mentioned quercetin, bromelain, vitamin C. Personally, I wouldn't necessarily take that as like an everyday year round supplement combination but for cases where you're going to be exposed to higher levels of histamine so for us in the summer when pollen season is high I think adding something like that on top can really boost the system so that's the way I see it you know Mm. don't kill me Uh, no it's it's like it's uh, everyone's solution is completely different and I'm going to end on this like for people like just my final thoughts on this as well is to say healing histamine this process it's a journey yeah there's no such thing as a quick fix to it like everything like just the way your symptoms came on over time just the way your condition came on over time yeah. it's the, the the healing is exactly the same the problem is we've got this ideology that we want a quick fix but it doesn't work like that it's yeah. a process and the minute you can understand that and the minute you understand it, it's a journey that mm-hmm. is that's the core to it all these mm-hmm. people that you look at that are really healthy they didn't do that shit overnight they did it over time. They went through a process and they found what works for them. Because mm-hmm. what works for me won't work for you. What yeah. works for you won't work for me. But everyone's 
everyone's health is a journey. So stop trying to make out like it's just going to be a quick fix for it. Because if you are looking for a quick fix, then go to your allopathic medicine, get yourself an antihistamine and go for that course of it. Because that's what that's what the solution is going to be for you. It'll be a quick fix for a small time until you break down even further. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and it's not, you know, it's not a a straight journey either it's not a straight path you know there's going to be some wobbles there's going to be some ups and downs but it's those wobbles that when you make it through them it Mm. makes you stronger it makes you more confident and it makes your you know long term even stronger and you 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 can stay there more comfortably 100 percent. thank you everyone for joining us um let us know what you think of the supplements that we've talked about is anything that we missed is there a supplement that you found that really worked Mm. for you for your histamine i mean there's definitely things that we probably probably 100 percent. yeah but just like the core ones this is a place for candid conversation you know let us tell us tell us your opinion what you think of it and if you've enjoyed this please do hit that like button it really supports our channel and you know hitting that subscribe button we know a lot of people are coming onto our channel watching our videos and not subscribing those subscribes actually help our channel grow and it allows us to pick up more topics and if you have a topic you want us to to cover and talk about please just let us know either hit in the comments or drop us an email our emails on the channel and we'll be more than happy to cover it thank you so much guys thanks guys Thank you.